Simple Pink Events channel and as you know it's cocktail time. Before we get to making a cocktail just a quick reminder that if you're enjoying these videos click subscribe and if you want to be notified the moment I upload a video click the little notification bell that way you never miss an upload and you'll know the minute there is a new cocktail video coming your way. Now Cinco de Mayo is just around the corner and it's a fun holiday. I love all things Mexican food, so any holiday that allows me to eat my favorite cuisine in the world, Mexican food, I am down for. So I know some people are having parties, maybe you're sitting home, maybe you'll go out to your favorite restaurant, but I was decided that when I was thinking about Cinco de Mayo and cocktails, of course the, you know, the ubiquitous margarita came to mind and I was like, oh, but I don't want to do another margarita and it just seems, it just seems so on the nose, like Cinco de Mayo, margarita, there's got to be something else to drink. Plus, I also recognize not a lot of people like tequila. Tequila is one of those spirits that people either love or they hate. They've either had a really bad experience or they really enjoy it. So I figured, hey, for all those people throwing parties who want to satisfy both crowds, why don't I offer you an alternative to the margarita that is tasty, refreshing, and perfect for spring. So today I'm going to make a white wine sangria. Now this sangria is an absolute hit and a cinch to make. I've made it before for big baby showers and other parties I've thrown and everybody loves it. It's easy to drink and it's perfect for a crowd. I love it because it's a large batch cocktail so you make it once, pour it over ice as people want it so you're not stuck behind the bar mixing drinks. I think that you're going to really enjoy it if you want an alternative to the classic margarita on Cinco de Mayo. So let's start making this sangria. First of all, we're going to start with our fruit. Every sangria starts with fruit. I've got two large Granny Smith apples cored, peeled, and cut. Now, the great thing is about this is you could use one or two. I use two because everyone I know loves the fruit in the sangria. It's the best part. You let the fruit soak in and then you have a yummy, boozy fruit salad when you're done. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to be very careful. Hopefully I don't splash apples all over the place. Ah, see? I'm going to use my hands. They are clean. They have been washed. And we're still going to have apples making a run for it. But we're going to put the apples in our pitcher and one just bounced off. Apples everywhere! And see that's why you do two apples because if you lose a few you still have plenty of apples in your sangria. But two Granny Smith apples and the tartness of the Granny Smith pairs perfectly well with the sort of sweetness of the sangria which is really nice balance in my opinion. So now that we've got our apples in the picture and some on my bar, we're just going to try and pick up a few here. Again, hands are washed and clean, best tools in the kitchen. Now we're going to put in sliced orange. So we've got a nice big orange all sliced up here and we're going to go ahead and put that in the picture. Got that, arrange it beautifully and we're going to take lemon slice and put that in there. So there you go, you got your apple, your lemon and your orange. Now see, isn't this already springy and citrusy? It's perfect for a nice afternoon cocktail at a party. Next we are going to do two bottles of Sauvignon Blanc or a magnum of Sauvignon Blanc, but if you can't find a magnum, get two bottles. Now you don't have to ball out on the Sauvignon Blanc because it is in a sangria, so get a nice moderate to lower end Sauvignon Blanc because you're going to mix it with other spirits and honey and all of that, but something you like to drink. Don't buy bad wine, it's just you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on it for sangria. So we're going to go ahead and pour that in our pitcher. Ah, that glug, 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 I love it. So we're going to pour that in. Now we're going to do our second bottle. And the great thing about the sangria is you can make it ahead. You can make it even the day ahead. Oh, I'm going to pull that off there. I've made it um, up to 24 hours in advance, and truthfully, the longer it sits, the better it gets. So, you know, don't rush the sangria. It makes it easy for party time because your drink is ready to go, so you don't have to run around and do this the day of. Next, we're going to add some peach schnapps. We're going to do two-thirds of a cup of peach schnapps. So this gives it that really nice peachy flavor. And we've got two-thirds. I can see the measuring over this way. I think my pitcher might be a little full, so we'll see. Hopefully, I don't overfill it. Two-thirds of a cup peach schnapps. So that adds a little sweetness and a little peach flavor. And finally, we're going to add a quarter cup of honey. And that's our sweetener. So you just take the honey, you put it on in there, 
get it all out and that's your sweetener so it's not overly sweet but it does have a nice like honey and peaches and you know citrus like how amazingly refreshing does that sound like I love this sangria and everyone who's ever tried it adores it so please trust me on this one you're going to want to make this at some point this spring or the summer if not for if not for Cinco de Mayo you'll definitely want to do it ah, at a, a lemon flop out um, you'll definitely want to make it for a party coming up, a brunch, a shower, anything like that. Now I'm just kind of stirring everything together because we've got to mix all of the ingredients, get the honey in there, incorporate it. Now the instructions say you do want to let this sit for three hours because again, you want the fruit to absorb the flavor of the, the wine and the peach schnapps. You want everything to marinate. You want the sangria to get the taste of the citrus. So three hours is preferable, but you can serve it right away. It's just not gonna have that rich merriment of flavors. I'm gonna serve it right now just to give you guys a little sneak peek of how it looks when you pour it up. But yes, the recommendation is at least three hours. Like I said, what you do is you cover it tight with plastic wrap or if you have a, a pitcher that has a tight lid, even better because you don't want the alcohol to evaporate out and losing stuff. And you put it in the refrigerator overnight, it's best. I love it overnight, it's easy. You do this right before you go to bed and the next day you are ready to party. So now as you see, we've got it all in here, all stirred up and now you're gonna just put get a glass of ice this is how you're going to serve it, preferably the next day. Like I said, you can do it now, but it won't taste nearly as good. So the next day, you're going to just get your glass with ice. You're going to pour it up. And you definitely want some of that fruit in there. Pour it up. And then you're going to garnish with a pretty orange wedge, like that. And you're going to top it with club soda. So that's the kind of the only thing you really have to do the next day is you're going to top it with club soda. You can't do that before because it'll go flat. So we're going to top it with a little club soda. And you've got a beautifully crisp, refreshing white wine sangria. And I prefer white wine sangrias to red wine sangrias because red wine Sangrias can be a little overly sweet and heavy. This is easy. It's like a white wine spritzer with a little fruit, a little kick with the schnapps. I guarantee you this is a party pleaser and it's a great way to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. It's a good alternative to margaritas so you still have like a, you know, a themed drink with the sangria but you're not serving margaritas so if you have tequila fans you can serve a margarita and if you have people who prefer wine and not tequila you can serve this again. Highly recommend, and so let's give it a taste. Now, like I said, it's usually better if it sits, but we're gonna taste it now just so you guys get an idea. Mm, it needs to sit for sure, but it is delicious once it does, so trust me on this. This is your quintessential Cinco de Mayo cocktail that you will just love to serve your friends and your family to celebrate this holiday. So I want to wish everyone a great day. Have a good time and happy Cinco de Mayo. Cheers everybody!